Today, we're talking about copywriting, but not just any old copy, copy that is personality packed, entertaining, and ultimately makes the sale. I'm chatting with my friend and copywriting expert, Brittany McBean, about eight specific tactics you can use to improve your copywriting, whether that's like your website copy and email funnel, or even like an Instagram post. Seriously, this stuff applies to everything. I'm so excited for this interview. Let's dive in. Hey guys, it's Elizabeth McCravey and you're listening to the Breakthrough Brand Podcast. Each week, I'll bring you workshop style trainings that teach you how to stand out online, design success from the inside out and create a breakthrough business. It's time to turn viewers into raving fans and design the business and life of your dreams. I'm so excited you're here. Welcome back to another episode of the Breakthrough Brand Podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth McCravey, and I'm just going to do a brief introduction, then we're going to dive into this interview with Brittany. This is seriously such a good, just like action-packed episode. And you guys know I love copywriting. I think it's one of the keys to having a successful website, like the words that go on it. And Brittany in this episode gives so many just really practical tips that you can implement right now without hiring a copywriter to improve everything you're writing in your business and make it personality-packed, entertaining, and ultimately stuff that'll make the sale. So from your website to your sales page, to your marketing emails, all of it. This is going to really help you here. So I want to tell you just a little bit about Brittany. We talk about her story some in the episode, but she's a conversion copywriter and a marketing strategist, and she helps online educators and creatives stand out with crystal clear messaging and a laser focused strategy. And she writes words that get you seen by the right people so you can make maximum, a maximum impact and in income. So again, I love Brittany. She is a like literal kindred spirit. I feel like we could talk about marketing for hours um, and almost did on this episode. We talked a lot off the recording as well. But without further ado, I'm just going to play this one. And I want you guys to know that you can get the full show notes for this episode um, at elizabethmccravey.com slash 74. If you're like, I need to re-reference some of what Brittany says, just scroll back there. All the links we mentioned are going to be there as well. And yeah, here we go. Enjoy my conversation with Brittany McBean. Hey, Brittany, welcome to the show. I'm so excited you're here. Oh my gosh, girl. I am so excited to talk with you. (laughs) Yes. You guys, Brittany is to introduce you kind of again, I'll say, I'll talk about you in the intro, you know, so everyone just heard that, but you are such a great copywriter and I love everything I read that you do. You constantly are teaching me things from watching you share your tips on Instagram stories and all of that. So I'm really excited to get to hear from you today, but to, to kick us off, will you just briefly share kind of who you are and who you help and what you do? Yeah, I'd love to. And you're so kind. And if I can pat you on the back for a minute, for anyone who's listening, I don't think you guys understand how valuable it is to have a designer who understands conversion and marketing. There's so many talented, she did not ask me to talk about this and this is totally off topic, but there's so many talented designers out there who make beautiful logos and beautiful, you know, pick beautiful fonts and all that. But a designer who understands how someone makes a buying decision is rare and this chick knows how to do it and they are not the same thing like getting a pretty website and a website that makes someone click and spend money with you are two very different things so give her all your money but hi (laughs) so that was that's my like PSA for everyone because it it is just so rare and you just you're really good at your job so um my job is I am a a copywriter and online marketing strategist for course creators um coaches online educators primarily the people that I serve have online businesses and um usually don't do too much in-person work and whether it's one-on-one or digital education through courses or memberships. And I am a conversion copywriter, which means that I write, and I specialize in kind of personality driven copy, which we're gonna talk about, but I write the words that very clearly communicates what it is that your ideal client needs to know, understand, and believe to say yes to your offer. So um, that is kind of just quickly what copywriting is. And then, you know, as a a strategist um, with my clients, 
we don't have a like, hey, I need five emails. Okay, I'll write five emails conversation. It's this is the goal. And I love, I get really, really nerdy about all of the strategy and figuring out, okay, what is this funnel going to look like? How are we going to do this? How many emails? How like how many web pages? All that kind of stuff. So um, yeah. that's what I do. Oh, and you're so good at it. I love that you two are like conversion based and personality based copyright. And I feel like we're so aligned on that because that's how I think Mm -hmm. about websites is like how much personality, how can we make it convert? It's like all together. So it's awesome. Yeah. And they don't have to be separate, but it also does take some discretion because there are going to be times where you're way more personality heavy and times where you're like straight to the point, cart closes in five minutes Buy this now where you're going to be talking about like when you're puppy peed on the floor that day or just like whatever, you know what I mean? It's like really straight to the point. So I think you understand that balance really well. And hopefully that's Mm -hmm. something we can help your people understand. Yeah. So I mean, okay, this is going to be such a fun conversation. I can already tell. And for people who listen regularly, we have not had an episode yet. That's like specifically like we're only talking about copywriting. It's all like weaved through so many things. So what Brittany's talking to us about today is personality packed copy that entertains and sells, which is like, when we think about our websites, I mean, and this applies to everything like email writing, all of it, but like, that's what we're aiming for is like entertaining our audience and also selling to them. So to start though, then we don't have to spend much time on this, but for, if anyone's like, wait, what is copywriting? What is sales copy? Like, what does this apply to that kind of thing? Can you kind of tell us that? Yeah. You know, if you ask 50 different writers, you'll get 50 different answers, but I'll kind of share with you how I create the distinction between content versus copy. And then, because that helps me figure out how I'm going to serve my clients and what I'm going to refer out. So I think content is the kind of material that you give out for free that is valuable, that entertains, that educates, that engages. And the goal of content is to create no like, and trust. So these are things like your social media, um, your weekly newsletter, broadcast emails, whatever you want to call them, um, your blog posts, but where these are really, really, really personality packed. And this is where you are trying to create a connection with the reader by giving them information, giving them quick wins, helping them understand who you are and your perspective and copy, especially conversion copy. There's a million different schools of copywriting. I am a conversion copywriter. So the goal of conversion copy is always to get someone or to um, persuade someone to say yes, walking them from the journey of browser to buyer to say yes to your offer, to click that button, to throw their credit card at your face, to contact you, whatever that is. So they have two very, very different goals. And of course, there's tons of crossover. You know, you have a call to action at the end of a Instagram post or a sales email, um, but copy is going to be the things where you are asking the reader to take a specific action. So your website, a sales sequence, a sales page, a landing page for your opt-in, that kind of stuff. Okay. I I love that distinction too. Thank you for that. Okay. So now we know what copywriting is. We know the difference between the content and copy aspect. So I, you already sent me your tips. So I already know these are really (laughs) awesome. So I'm really excited to kind of walk us through you teaching this to everyone, but you have, how many tips do we have here? About eight that Brittany's going to walk us through about ways to like add personality and personality packed, entertain and sell with your copy. So let's start with that first one. What's your first big tip for us? Yeah. And actually, is it okay before we do that for me to address one objection that I hear a lot about personality? So I hear a lot of different things when it comes to why people are a little bit afraid or feel like they can't communicate their personality in their copy. And so number one, throw professionalism out the window. Like professionalism can be, um, you being great to work with. It can be you showing up on time. It can also be like, Hey, I don't cuss. I cuss in my stuff. That's professional for me, but it can, it doesn't have to mean speaking like you're in a boardroom and you don't have to be funny, snarky, and sassy to have super personality packed copy because at the end of the day, you have a personality, whether you're super introverted, whether you're a data nerd, whether you're really quiet, just whatever you are, your personality is interesting and it's going to connect with other people who are like you or who really enjoy 
those aspects of your character. And and basically every industry is really saturated. And I think that's a really good thing because it means that we're taking money out of corporate and big box stores. And we have all of these amazing small businesses to spend our money with. And we want to spend our money with people we know and that we like and that um, align with our values. So I think the more you can share your personality and who you are and what you care about, the more people can make really informed and confident decisions buying from you. So that's, if you're like, if you heard personality and you're like, all right, I'm going to skip, or we're just going to go to the next episode. No, no, no. You've got a personality. It's great. People love it. This is how you can put it in your writing. Interrupting this episode with a suggestion for the small business owners listening. Ever wonder what you should do for healthcare when you and your spouse are both self-employed so there's no work-provided health insurance to participate in? Well, when my husband Adam joined me in the entrepreneurial job space over four years ago, we joined Christian Healthcare Ministries instead of getting traditional health insurance. And it was the best decision for us, especially in these years of growing and raising a family while also running multiple businesses. CHM is a health cost-sharing ministry and is a faith-based alternative to health insurance. We did tons of research before choosing CHM, and if you know me and Adam, you know we are all about doing the math when making big or small financial decisions. And even though it's not insurance, CHM shares 100% of eligible medical bills, which is more than the typical 70 or 80% of medical bills paid for by insurance companies. All sharing is determined by the CHM guidelines, which you can check out before and after joining. And for the mamas and mamas to be listening, you truly cannot find a better healthcare option for maternity care. I had a vaginal delivery and a C-section and birth center care and hospital care between my two pregnancies and births, and it was all 100% shared for. And outside of birth, we've had our share of emergency room visits and procedures as a family, and those costs were all shared by members at Christian Healthcare Ministries, leaving us only paying our monthly contribution. CHM is less expensive month-to-month than insurance, and because there's no network, you can choose your care with whichever providers best fit your family. I seriously just cannot recommend Christian Healthcare Ministries enough. You've got to check them out. Go to elizabethmccravey.com slash CHM for more information. Also putting that link in the show notes, elizabethmccravey.com slash CHM. Now back to the episode. I love that distinction too, thinking about how, I mean, so many people listening right now do have businesses where they're service-based or the business is their own name and the people are working directly with them, Mm -hmm. not with some like, you know, they're not the CEO and their people are working with an employee, like it's you. And so it is important for that trust factor even more than if we were like some big corporation in a lot of ways. Yeah. People want to know where their money's going and they want to spend it with someone who they want to support, you know, that's a part of the buying decision. So I just think the more you can let people know who you are, the more you're empowering them to spend the money with you. I love it. Yeah. Okay. So we have that out. Now what's your, your first tip for us? Okay. So I put the best one first, because I think if any of these others feel overwhelming or confusing, or you're just not sure, but if you can start implementing this in your writing, it is going to make the biggest difference. So if you zone out after this one, you hear nothing else, just try this tip with something you write this week. And so the first thing that I think can make your copy more interesting, more engaging, more entertaining, and more captivating while communicating your personality is being specific with as many details as you possibly can. So I say all the time, people do not buy vague solutions to vague problems. And also, I just think this is so interesting. Um, and this is everyone, like this is, there's no, no shame here because everyone does this, but every client I work with, I say, okay, tell me how your ideal client feels before they start working with you. Like what is the problem that they have? And no matter who the client is, no matter what kind of business they have or what they're selling or what they're offering, they usually say that their ideal client feels overwhelmed, stressed, uh, tired, frustrated, right? And then when I say, okay, so what does your offer, your product, your um, service, what does your offer do for them? What is the solution that they get? And they always say, well, they're happier, they feel more satisfied, they're, they have a better life. And so no one's going to pay thousands and thousands of dollars to feel satisfied, right? So I want you right now to anytime you find yourself writing stressed, frustrated, overwhelmed, or writing like you'll be so much better or so much happier, 
stop and paint a picture. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some examples of what this looks like, but you can be specific by plugging in the actual details, like painting that scene, and that not only is it so engaging, like it like triggers our brains as readers to start imagining ourselves in that scene. It becomes like a story that we put ourselves in which means that they're putting themselves in your story, which means that they're building connection with you. So like, instead of saying, um, oh, if you join my business coaching, you can, I'm going to make all this up. So it's gonna be terrible copy. Nobody do this. But like, um, <laughs> if you like hire me as a business coach, you'll be able to make um, a six figure income from the comfort of your home. So, okay, cool. But that's not a picture. So if I say like, Hey, when we hop on a Zoom call once a week, every day for six months, I'm going to give you all of the strategies, the templates, and the, um, the actions you need to take to be taking extra vacations and a full month off by this time next year, all from the comfort of your Spanx leggings, right? Like, I just made all that up. But you, you know what I mean? Like, it's plugging in the details. And it's really important to plug in the specific details of your ideal client. So your, your audience could be totally different. What do they love to drink? Are they bulletproof coffee makers? Are they like Starbucks lattes? Are they um, MacBook Pro users? Or are they like whatever the desktop HP. is called? Or, yeah, yeah, or yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, just start plugging things in. So this was actually um, a headline from a recent sales page that I use, it was the lead, not the headline, but um, instead of saying, because I want you to see exactly how you can use this in sales copy, instead of saying, this proven system could live to the, lead to the life of your dreams, how many times has someone told us that we can have the life of our dreams or step into our power or step into mm -hmm. our greatness? Like, I cannot put step into my greatness on my to-do list, right? So instead of saying, this proven system could lead to the life of your dreams, I wrote out the long ass run on sentence of, because this proven system could be the thing that gives you the time to spend this summer lounging in the hammock, watching your kids run through the sprinkler, knowing you're paying off your debt and becoming the niche authority you already knew you are. Because just by opening up that MacBook Pro, you can see that your funnel is consistently filling up with your dreamboat audience at the top and converting them to dreamboat buyers at the bottom. So all of that, like I included, um, what you're going to be doing with your free time, like what the benefit of, of this system is, you're going to be lounging in your hammock, watching your kids run through the sprinkler. You don't have to get up. You can be relaxed and chill. And you know, like your phone's inside, your computer's inside, and you are paying off debt while you lay there. You are becoming a niche authority, which means you're gaining status, which is something people really want. So these different things, it's just a matter of plugging in the things that your audience wants, needs, and uses. And you know that by asking them and market research is a whole other topic, but that was really packed and loaded, but I just, just be specific. So every time you are writing copy, ask yourself, could I paint this scene? Is this so specific an actor could act it out in a movie? Like, am I writing a play that an actor could pick up and know, okay, I'm drinking this kind of coffee. I'm sitting on this kind of couch. I'm driving this kind of car. I'm not just relaxing. I'm binging on the marvelous Mrs. Maisel while I scroll on Pinterest, right? So just use these really specific things to put your reader in the middle of the story and grab their attention and just kind of showcase their personality. And you're also, I mean, this is just kind of everything that copywriting is, but you're also communicating to them that you know them, you get them. Like when they're drinking their bulletproof coffee and you just said bulletproof yeah. coffee, they're like, oh, she gets me. I'm really safe with her. I can pay her. <laughs> oh my, okay. You just said so many things I want to highlight. That was so good. I love all that. And you just gave like a, a thousand tips right there, even in that one tip. But really did. I think I covered like three of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Going into like, like one of the first things you said, people don't buy vague solutions to mm -hmm. vague problems. And you guys, when you're thinking about your copy, what you just said, if we all want to use words, like we're overwhelmed, we're stressed and, and those kind of things. And I heard someone the other day, I can't remember who, but kind of pointing out that all products and services, especially online courses, are doing that. Like we're all making you less stress. We're all They're making selling you people a better version of themselves. That's all yes. marketing is. So yeah. why, what is your better version? 
Yes. And so not being generalized, getting specific. And that goes back to like, what is the reason people buy what you're selling? And when you answer that, then you can kind of get into like, okay, it's not just to get overwhelmed. Um, Cause I mean, I could even say that with like the stuff I sell, like it all really does. Like it can apply to some hundred percent. So yeah, getting more specific. And I love that example you gave. And we'll also, you guys will have show notes for this where this is written out. If you're like, I need Brittany to say that again. Um, you can also read that there. Um, okay. So I love that first one. Um, being specific and being tactical sensory details. Love it. Okay. Um, want to tell us the second one? Yeah. So this actually kind of feeds into the last one. So for the first one, I just want you to think about being as specific as you can, plugging in as many details as you can, adding as many senses as you can. What are you hearing? What are you smelling? What are you wearing? What are you seeing? All that stuff. Okay. So number two, we kind of, I mentioned this at the end of the first one, but I want you to use your ideal client's words, not yours. Okay. So I want you to think about communicating your message using their words. Cause this doesn't mean that you're losing your words. You're losing your message. You're telling them what you need them to know, understand and believe, but you are using their words. So there are a ton of places to find this. We could do a whole nother podcast on market research. I could talk all day long about it, but at the end of the day, you want to use what they call it, whatever it is, your industry jargon does not make you sound smarter, more professional. It just confuses someone. And our worlds are so noisy and so overwhelming people that are confused, peace out. So the second you can use the words, they know, describe it the way that they are describing their pain, their problems, their frustrations, their, um, their desires, their hopes, their dreams. Listen for these really, really specific words and then copy and paste them. Like you get to be a lazy copywriter. Your job is to figure out what the message is that you're communicating and then you can just plug in their words. I'm going to just really, really quick rapid fire a couple places where you can listen to this because you're like, okay, cool, Brittany, use their words. What, how do I know? What are they saying? So this can be just really intentional listening at anything like um, your sales calls. Like please record your sales calls. That is a market research, like just, just do it. And whatever I work with a client, I ask them, do you have any sales calls I can watch? Like I want to watch you in action and I want to hear why this person called you, why they hopped on this call. Um, so, you know, stuff like that, like sales calls, the emails and inquiries that come in, um, and you know, make sure that you're asking these intentional questions on your inquiry so that you can capture this information. Instagram posts are great. Instagram or Instagram, um, stories, sorry doing a poll, even just asking, how does it feel when you try to blank? I mean, that's like just basic, like that, that question, how does this feel? Um, another golden question is asking somebody if you could wave a magic wand and have this problem solved, but you're clearly describing the problem that you solve, what would that look like? Okay. So that's another question you can ask and you can do these on Instagram stories, you know, on a Facebook poll or Facebook live, uh, the DMS you get, the comments that you get, but just be listening for the ways that people are describing their experience with the problem that you solve. And then also their experience working with you. Like if you're looking at testimonials and people are saying, um, Elizabeth was so amazing to work with because the bonuses that she gave out were like the difference between being able to launch my product or not. And Elizabeth might not know that the bonuses were that important, but now she can write in her copy, like this bonus could be the difference between whether you can launch this or not. That's understanding like what's important for them. Mm -hmm. And then quick, like ninja tip. If you can do some crazy deep data mining and go through, um, content that is relevant to your niche, and looking at blog comments, YouTube comments, um, Reddit forums, Facebook groups, you know, search the keywords in a Facebook group, but anywhere that people are talking about this thing that you do, you're going to have some really, really golden copy, especially the places where they don't think anybody's reading it. Like some of my best copy comes from Amazon book reviews on whatever topic I'm writing for, for my clients. So yeah, I mean, that was a big like market research chunk, but just use their words. Like, and you can just ask them, ask them on a sales call. What do you call this thing? Or like yeah. when you are telling your husband at night how, or your partner, how frustrated you were after trying to figure out this all day, what are you saying to your partner? 
just ask yeah. them and then just use their words. Uh, I, I love that one. Yeah. And the, going back to what you said at the beginning, your message with their words. Mm -hmm. And it is like, it's not impressive when we throw in all of our industry jargon into our sales copy. And I think a, a couple things I want to say, one, a great way to realize this, the truth of that is for you to hire someone to do something in your business that you do not understand at all. And then realize how much you don't understand that industry jargon. And it shows you like, I understand my industry really well. Am I accidentally saying things that are going to confuse my ideal client because they're hiring you to do the thing because they can't do it because it's not their thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's not, I'm not impressing anyone, but I'm like, Oh, I'm going to get you a spit draft and then a wireframe and, and do some voice yeah. of customer research. Like, no, that just makes them feel like I'm trying to put myself above them and I'm yeah. not. But if I could just say like, Oh, I'm going to dig really deep and I'm going to do the research that I need to understand your ideal client. And then I'm going to give you a couple of drafts to make sure we're on the same page and then I'll move forward. Like why yeah. wouldn't I make it? Why wouldn't I make them feel more safe and comfortable with me? So yeah, um, yeah you're just not impressing anyone. So stop it. Just use their words. <laughs> Yeah, you just gave so many great market research ones. Another one I'll throw in that's probably one you you might have actually even said this one, but surveys like oh, through yeah. something like type form. Um, I do I, I probably will start doing it more often right now, once or twice a year. I'm actually about to do another one. A survey that I promote on my to my email list, to Instagram. And last time we had over 150 people fill it out that listen to this podcast that follow me on Instagram. And the, like, it was that same thing of like, tell me this in your words, mm -hmm. like tell me what you need. And we've like, we're actually still working on it. It's from January, but compiling that into like, okay, here's things to talk about. Here's ways to word things differently. Here's the actual problem we're solving through someone else's words. So that's oh my a great gosh. Way to do yeah. It too. Surveys are so valuable. And if you feel intimidated by surveys, like you're like, I just don't know what questions to ask. You can just kind of take note of what's been helpful to you in the past or what kind of questions you've asked, whether it's even just Instagram stories that you've gotten some really great swipes or like, if you're like, I wonder what kind of coffee my audience does drink, ask them in a survey. And then like whatever rises to the top is the common denominator. Well, there you go. Just throw it in there. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a, that's a good way too to add. Cause that's going to just be a fun question. You don't have to be all like, I'm doing market research. What kind yeah. of coffee do you like? It's still like a fun way to yeah, yeah, just engage like put on. me Put me in your living room in the morning. What does it look like yeah. when you start your day? And then like, okay, great. If if a lot of people are like meditating or setting intentions, that's a very different message than the person who's like, oh, I'm trying to finish my coffee while my toddler smears peanut butter all over my pants, right? Like those are two very different lives. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. I love that one. Yeah. So talking, like you said, your message with their words. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's awesome. All right. This third one, I'm excited to hear about this one. Yeah. So this is the one that I think is a little more intangible and you learn by doing it, but on our website, in our copy, in our content, we love to talk about ourselves. Um, I mean, just humans are selfish beings in general. Like we care about ourselves and our experience, but sometimes when we aren't sure what else to write, we talk about ourselves, especially on like an about page, right? You think that's supposed to be about you. But the problem is the person reading it is also the most concerned about themselves. So the second you start putting you in the center of your copy and not the reader, then you lose your reader. This does not mean you don't get to talk about yourself. I love talking about myself. I love letting people know what my day is like, all of that stuff. Um, my about page is all about me, but it is only about me through the lens of how it impacts and affects them. So you can write about yourself if it's really about them. So just kind of a little umbrella um, guideline I want you to think of is that in the story you are telling, whatever you are writing, you're telling a story. In the story you are telling, you are the guide, not the hero. The reader is the hero. And you may have heard this. Donald Miller talks a lot about this in his story brand. Um, and if you haven't read that, read it. It's really helpful. But you know, think of like, you are Obi-Wan Kenobi, they are Luke Skywalker, you are not the hero of this journey. So even, you know, if you're telling a, your origin story, you are including the details, the moments, the circumstances that are really familiar and visceral to your ideal audience. You're not 
just saying what happened because you want to talk about yourself. So, you know, about pages where I see like the biggest misstep, it's like, this is where I went to college. These are my internships. These are my favorite things. And I have like my favorite things on my site and it's helping someone understand my personality because I want them to make an informed decision. And I have things specifically in my about page to help someone decide I do not like her because I don't want to work with them if they don't like me and vice versa. Um, but in general, the stories that you tell, the details that you bring up, um, the problems that you highlight, the solutions that you highlight are going to be the things that matter to your reader and help them either see you as the guide or see you as someone who went through that hero's journey that now can take them through it. So you only talk about yourself if it's really about them and you are trying to communicate a message through connection. Yes. Okay. I love that. And yeah, and the, a thing I always say is like thinking about does this express empathy or authority, which I know is mm -hmm. another like thing Don Miller talks about, but like empathy with them and their problem that you get it or authority that you are someone who has like been there, done that and can help. I actually have in my compelling copy blueprint course, it talks about how to go back through your sales page and look for I, me, my, uh -huh. and just see like, Hey, can I remove that somewhere? It, except for in there, there's a little area where, you know, to talk about yourself on the sales page mm -hmm. and that's a little different, but just in general, like, are you saying I, I, I all the time? If so, like, can we reword that sentence to be a little bit more about them? Yeah. Take out as many eyes and me's as you can. And even like you can switch the pronoun and just have total incorrect, you know, English and grammar and say like, like if your bio is like, I help course creators and coaches write the messages that you need to, you know what I mean? Like that is not a proper sentence, but it is taking the focus off myself. And I could even um, make that sentence more powerful by saying, helping course creators and coaches, yeah. right? So like I'm completely taking the eye out of it, but the more you can say you, the more their brain says, hey, she's talking to me, let's put ourselves in that situation of working with her. And then if they've already like literally visualized, and I, I don't think I've ever used the word visualized before, but if they've already visualized themselves working with you, they're a lot more likely to jump on board. It's called confirmation bias. So yeah, so, so do that, talk about them. Yeah. Okay. Love that one. Let's talk about the fourth tip you have. Okay. So this is one I know a lot of you have heard. You have heard a million bajillion times to use storytelling in your writing. What the heck does that mean? Do we just tell the big story of our life? Do we tell our hardest moments, our deepest moments, our origin story? So yes, those are all important and they all have their place and they are something people want to hear, but you can literally use story in every piece of content you write and it doesn't have to do anything. It doesn't have to have anything to do with what you're actually talking about. So there's a, you know, we can learn the art of the segue when you connect the two, but even just saying like starting a sentence, I was talking to my husband the other day and and that's like how you start the whole post or pieces, piece of content or whatever that, that is putting someone in the middle of a story. Just like we talked about the tactile and sensory details. Like, Oh, when I'm out at a restaurant, I love to order blank. Well, even that is like story. It's like putting you in a scene and a time and a place in my welcome series. I have a story about stories <laughs> that I, that I love because um, my nephew, he was, I think he, yeah, it was this year. So he was three at the time and he called me one night um, on FaceTime. He lives in town and we talk every now and then. And when he is trying to procrastinate going to bed, he calls us and it's great. And he's so funny. And he called me and uh, he said, Whitney, I was at Chifile and the girl wouldn't move. So I kicked her. <laughs> and I said, well, tell me more about that buddy. And he went to tell me that he was at the top of the slide at the Chick-fil-A playhouse and this girl wouldn't move. And he kept telling her to move and she wouldn't move. So he just kicked her and then he had to go home. And I was like, yeah, I get that. Like, I get that you just wanted to kick someone. But in my, in my email in the welcome series, I tell that story. And then I say, even at age three, my nephew understands the importance of storytelling. Like that is how we create relationships and connection. And we can talk about, you know, uh, oral history and narrative tradition being passed on and all of that. But anytime that you can tell a story, you're going to be able to communicate a complicated or um, complex 
idea or subject in a way that is so much more um, connective and impactful. So that's why you tell stories really, really, really quick, a way you can kind of start to find the stories in your life. I love to think about the movie Inside Out. So hopefully you've seen it. If, if you have kids, you probably seen have. It. You, I, I'm the worst. I thought that when I saw the senior notes, I'm like I've, I've watched it once while babysitting. So I was only half watching it. Well, this will apply even so if you haven't I seen it. Watch, watch after this. So in the movie Inside Out, the five main characters inside the main character's brain are our five main emotions. So there's disgust, anger, um, joy, sadness, and oh my gosh, what am I missing? Fear. There it is. Sorry. So those are, that's not just something Pixar made up. Those are the five core emotions that every single human being feels on a deep, deep level. And that all of the other complicated emotions that we feel can tie back to one of those. So any moment that you have throughout your day, throughout your week, that brings up one of those five feelings is going to be a story that you can tell to connect with your reader. So, you know, when my daughter was, she like ripped her hand out of mine as we were getting into the car and she started making like a beeline for the street at breakneck speed. She is so fast and I saw a car coming. Like the fear that I felt in my heart was so visceral. And maybe I can use that story to, I don't know, empathize with, so right now it's June, 2020, and we're in the middle of a really, really big um, conversation about race in our country. And as a white woman, I would never understand what that is like, but my daughter is black. So I do have that um, empathy level there, but if I can share a story with someone of like, I like thought I saw, I'm like almost getting emotional just telling the story, but like I thought I saw something like that would cause like irreparable harm to our family that we would never come back from. Like that moment flashed through my head and I thought like I couldn't, I couldn't do anything about it. Right. And of course, like that is one that's like super deep and emotional and also like nowhere near the pain the black community feels when someone is murdered, but I digress. I like the experiences that you have throughout your week that make you feel one of those five emotions are stories that you can tell to deeply connect. So when you get that pit in your stomach where it just makes you want to throw up because something happened or something makes you laugh so hard, you pee your pants or something um, really terrifies you to your core or just whatever these things are, Bank them, just like keep them in a little in a little box somewhere, and then you can tell them back, and you can easily connect them with something your client experiences, or something that you solve, or just a way that you want to create a deep connection. So, just um, use those five emotions, and when they pop up, just take note, like literally bookmark that in your brain, and say, oh, maybe I'm going to write an email about that this week, or maybe I'm just yeah. going like, to put it away for a rainy day. I, I love that, and I think a, a cool thing you said and all that is that it's not like this really cool story of this amazing thing that you did. Mm -hmm. It's like everyday stuff. And that's actually more relatable to drop people into those stories versus like this one time when I was on stage doing this awesome thing, you know, just yeah. everyday stuff. Yeah, um, totally. Like that. even just like, like my husband <laughs> makes fun of me all the time. He's the best. He's the most supportive person, but I'll be like telling him about a big win that I've had or something I'm really proud of because I have like cripplingly low self-esteem. So I have to like verbally validate myself and he always jokes and this is a total joke and I know he doesn't mean this. It's our, our running joke, but he always says, Brittany, no one loves you more than you, right? So like he always says that and it's funny and it makes me laugh and, and we both know it's not true and it's his way of being like, I'm really proud of you. But I could just write that in an email and be like, what if you just talked about yourself so that someone said like, no one loves you more than you? Like, what if we just showed up in the world that way, right? Like, I don't know why I thought of that. It's like the first thing I picked off my head, but just whatever little, little slice of life moments that bring up those emotions. Yeah. You can regurgitate back to your audience. Yeah. And, and before we move on from that one, can you say what the five emotions were again? So everyone can kind of like remember that for thinking yeah. about our life stories. So joy and sadness, like those are probably the ones that we experience the most fear, anger, and disgust. And some of us are going to connect with more of those than others or feel them more than others, but make sure you're kind of rotating so that somebody who's a really angry person <laughs> can connect with you if you had an angry moment, right? Yeah. Or something like that. So yeah. 
Okay. I'm totally going to do that of like keeping that like in a notepad, even on my phone of like, what, what random story can I remember and share later? That's Mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, Okay. Let's talk about the fifth tip. This one is something that um, there's a copywriter by the name of Rye Schwartz. He is, if you've followed Amy Porterfield, um, a couple of other big people, he has really been present in their courses, their content. Um, He writes a lot of their copy and I love him. He created this method and technique of copywriting called coaching the conversion and his whole thing, and this is going to be really relevant and important, but his whole thing is that the person who encounters you or your copy for the first time. So let's use, for example, the very top of a 5,000 word sales page is not the same person who buys your product and that your job is to take them on a journey to help them become that person who is ready to buy. And so this tip isn't about that journey, but I just really like his work is so that impacts so much of what I do and it has changed how I write. Like I want to give him credit, but a big thing of what he does is he uses self-forgiveness and compassion as a way to get someone ready to buy your product. So we know, like we all know at a deep level that like, shaming someone never leads someone to change. We know that like yelling at someone, like these things do not work when we are trying to make a persuasive argument, when we're trying to persuade someone to take an action or change their mind. If you don't believe me, feel free to hop on social media and see how much it does not work to yell at someone and shame them. But if you can just quickly think, okay, why hasn't my reader, why haven't they been able to solve this problem in the past? How is it not their fault? Why is now a better time for them? Why is it a good thing that they've waited? And what makes them so uniquely equipped to succeed now? So if you can find ways to weave into your copy, I would encourage you not to just say something like, it's not your fault, but maybe, maybe, okay, so we're also in the middle of like a pandemic and quarantine right now. And so maybe even just saying something like, you know what? Life was too busy last year and you had too much going on. You couldn't have done everything. But now that you're at home and you have time to focus on organizing your closet, maybe it's really time to take this this house organization course or something like that. So helping them understand why maybe they didn't succeed in the past, maybe that wasn't their fault and why this time is different. Because if you can create a sense of self-forgiveness and kind of remove that shame, then you are going to really um, give them the tools they need to confidently say yes to your offer. So just really quick again, think about how you can explain to them why it didn't work last time, why this time is different. Maybe you are the reason it's different. Maybe you've done this more than anyone else and the last person wasn't the best equipped. And of course, we're not talking down to competitors. Like we're not pointing a finger at them. We're talking about ourselves, but why it didn't work last time, um, why it's going to work this time, why it's a good thing that they've waited and how they are uniquely equipped to succeed. I love all that. That's, and that's such a, like, that one feels like the hardest one for Mm -hmm. me of all the ones you just so far of like it. Yeah. It's, it's something that's something big to think about. Like why hasn't it worked before? And that's so true though, that especially when we think about, I've thought about this with the online course space. There are so many people out there who have like 10 plus halfway finished online courses. Mm -hmm. And so they look at another course of like, none of these worked for me last time. I wasn't able to finish it. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they joined a mastermind and didn't really participate. Like there's all those kinds of, or maybe they bought a website template and never Mm -hmm. finished it. Mm -hmm. I never used it. There, that kind of stuff is, is so true and something to like address and that we can often think, like forget that they've maybe been there and done that or tried to have been there and done that before. So yeah. That, and it can be really one. quick and simple. And these can just be things you can keep in the back of your mind. Like just kind of thinking about these things. Like I, one of the sales pages I just wrote um, was for a, a marketing program. And um, we kind of were walking through the story of like going through a failed launch and how visceral that pain was. And I just put a line in there, something like, Um, like, of course you couldn't do it. Like you can't be a full-time copywriter and a full-time website designer and a full-time developer and a full-time online marketer and do your coaching business. Like not even Gwyneth could do that. Right. So it's just like just one line being like, yeah, of course you couldn't. Like this isn't cause you're not good and smart and brilliant. This is cause no one can do that. So yeah, don't worry about it. We've got this for you. Right. 
That's a great one. Yeah. We all need to re-listen to everything you just said and then try it. I'm going to like re-listen to that because that was so good. Um, okay. Let's, let's talk about this next one. I'm excited about this one. Number six. Okay. So this one can, I'll go through this one really quickly because I just think it's really helpful. So we've talked about all these different ways that you can improve both the conversion of your copy and the personality, but like how, where does all that stuff live? Do you just sit down and write um, a landing page with a story that happened today? Or like, do you have to think back and, and it can get really overwhelming, right? Trying to figure out like, Oh, what was that word my client used? What was that funny story that I was at the gym? What was I thinking? What was I doing? Right? So if you can just have a little copy vault on your phone, in your notes section, you can do a Trello board, you can do a spreadsheet, whatever, like whatever gets you high with organization, just have a place where you store little copy and story swipes that you want to include. So, you know, um, I've heard copywriters who like at the end of every week will just kind of go and download all the stories of things that happened in that week that kind of brought up those emotions and they just want to kind of remember and maybe when they're writing for a client or themselves, they can be like, okay, I want to communicate joy here. Let me go back to those stories and see if there's anything that like makes a connection, right? When you're doing your market research and people are answering your emails, answering your survey, you know, you're asking a question on Instagram, whatever, just, you can take a screenshot and put it in there. Maybe it's even like an Evernote, but just having a place where you house all of this stuff, a copy vault, a story vault, so that you can um, pull inspiration from and um, just literally have words to copy and paste. It will make writing so much easier. And then the last tip that I want to tack on to this is you can pull inspiration and swipes from an eclectic collection of content. So I get ideas all the time from podcasts. I love, and not business podcasts. So, so especially if you're worried about like plagiarizing, stealing someone else's words, we're not doing that. We are not stealing somebody else's words, but the best way you can make sure you're not doing that is pulling inspiration outside of your niche. So I love listening to true crime podcasts. Um, some of them are comedy true crime podcasts, which may make you think I'm an awful human, but these people are so funny and so witty. One of my, my favorite podcasts is My Favorite Murder, and I get copy slides from there all the time. The host is so funny. She's a brilliant comedian, and she'll say things that I'm like, oh, that is the best way to describe that. I'm going to steal that as an example. So podcasts, TV shows, books, music, comedy, whatever you're listening to, pull inspiration from so that you can, like if there's something that makes you smile that you're like, oh, that's a really clever way of explaining that. Or I love that phrasing. Put it in your vault and pull it out when you need it. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And I love what you just said about the ideas from random podcast. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I think I've said this on this show before, but one of my favorite little marketing things I did, I got from crime junkie podcast girl. And I saw them do, I was like, wow, that worked so well. It literally converted me to paying for their podcast. And I was like, I'm going to do that. And I did it in one of my uh, launches last year, but it's so true that like we can learn stuff from unexpected places. So that, I love that me some awesome. Ashley and Britt. I am on yes, board. <laughs> me too. I was actually was supposed to have gotten to go to their live show um, in Nashville, but they got rescheduled, but now it's in the fall. So I, oh, I love them so much. But, that's so fun. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Number seven, let's talk about this one. This one's really quick and simple and it can be a game changer. So if you can reference any kind of pop culture into your copy, you are going to automatically up the personality factor and the ability to make someone smile and connect. So whether it's, you know, a super hot um, Netflix show that's trending, like I wrote an entire sales page with Tiger King because it was right in the middle of that, right? Um, you know, maybe it's referencing a song or music or just any anything, books, anything that is a pop culture reference that someone else is going to see and be like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I get it. Like, like you could, even if you're just like, um, I don't know, like let's say you're selling a fan. I'm just totally making this up. And you say something like, if your house is steamier than um, a chapter of Fifty Shades of Grey, right? Just like something like that is like, oh, that's funny. And tack onto that, I want to really encourage you to use nostalgia. So here's like a ninja tip. 
everyone tells you you need to know your ideal client's age and name and demographic and blah, 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 blah. And that stuff is really important because you can use it to figure out what's important to them. So if you know your ideal client's age and their generation, then you know when they were in high school, especially if it's different than yours. And high school is one of the most formative times in our lives. And if you can reference some pop culture or something nostalgic from the time and error that they were in high school, you are going to connect at such a deep level, especially, like I said, if they are not in your generation, that's really important for you to know. So you can go back and just like, oh, what was, what was trending? And like, even, even in my proposal, like at the bottom of my proposal, it says, um, and I loved boy bands, like, and by loved, I mean, currently do, but I, <laughs> just have something like that says like, so it goes without saying that I'd be more excited than a middle school girl front row at an instant concert circuit 1998 to work with you. <laughs> like that's like, oh, so it. like wordy and long, but it, it is like, that paints a clear picture. No one is confused yeah. about what that means. Um, so yeah, so reference pop culture and use nostalgia, especially digging back to um, high school for your ideal client. Uh, that, that's so good. And even like, I actually have your website pulled up and I want to read something you have on your homepage because oh, it's gosh. a great example of that, but you, it's, it's for one of your freebies and you say defining your ideal client can be more confusing than reading a paper map. The nineties were a dark time, <laughs> but that's a great example. Cause you read that and you're like, yeah, like the nineties, we did not have the iPhone to get us around. So it paints a really clear picture and makes you want to opt in. Um, yeah. that's so smart. When I was writing that, like, I was like, okay, I know, like, my people are tech obsessed, or actually, no, what I was thinking was, what feels, like, really, really, really hard and cumbersome? Because I was trying to communicate this, this feeling that, like, trying to nail down who your ideal client is feels so, like, intangible and really hard and so pointless. And instead of saying all those words, I was like, what feels really intangible and hard to understand and confusing? And then I was like, okay, what ha Like, what do we use without technology that is so much easier now? And then I was like, oh my God, remember MapQuest, like remember yeah. paper maps, like now every time we hop on our phone. So I'm kind of creating that, that image for someone being like, okay, not having Britney's freebie is going to be like walking in the dark ages before iPhones and having her freebie is going to be like the iPhone of ideal client, right? Yeah. Well, that, even that question, like logic chain, you just went through, like, that's a great way for us to find like, what is the nostalgic or pop culture callback we can make to it of like the feeling. And then what does that relate to as a comparison? So I love that. I need to do more of that. You've inspired me to work on that. I love it. I love it. Okay. The last one is the easiest. I know. So I'm like, Oh, this is so simple and easy. And then I talk for 30 minutes. This is easy. And I think it's going to give everyone a bit of a sigh of relief. So I want you to write simply and clearly. I want you to think clarity over clever. You do not have to use big words. You do not have to use interesting metaphors. You do not have to use funny analogies and allegories. You don't have to be poetic. You just need to be clear. Studies show that most readers, even incredibly intelligent people read content like what you and I are writing at a third to fifth grade level or that like that is the level where they comprehend the most. So you do not have to write like a rocket scientist to prove your intelligence because remember what we said at the end of the day, confusion causes people to bounce. So if their brain even has to work two seconds harder to figure out what you're saying, they're gone. So don't like, even if there are things in your paid content that you use to, you know, solve a problem or explain a situation, like maybe you have some really interesting like metaphor that you're like, this is our thing that we call this thing, right? And it's like your insider language, if you know, if you know what I mean, like don't use your insider language with people who are not insiders. You have to be clear and bring them into the inside. So um, there's a website called HemingwayApp.com. You might have heard of it. I say this on like every podcast because um, I love it so much. But you can take anything you, you've ever written, anything you're writing, copy and paste it, put it in there, and it will instantly spit out the reading level at which you are writing and um, any sentences that are kind of a little confusing or clunky and hard to read. And sometimes I will leave those in there because I want somebody to feel like they're reading like a run on sentence that they're out of breath. Do you know what I mean? Like when you're like, 
and on and on and on and on. And you're saying that and you want them to get that feeling. So sometimes I'll leave those in there, but it's also really important to know where you need to change it to improve clarity. So clear and simple clarity over clever. You do not have to be smart. You just have to be clear. Yeah. And I love that resource you shared too. That's so helpful. Yeah. And I, I always say that too, of like third to fifth grade reading level. And that can be a sigh of relief too, for people of like, this doesn't have, you don't have to like impress people with how like genius you are at your craft. You can t- say like, Hey, like would your niece or nephew or your child who's that age, like would they, would they get that? So that's awesome. And you know, are so I think that's like the difference. Like we were talking about of being a brilliant designer who's just incredibly talented as a designer and being a designer who's incredibly um, talented at being a conversion designer. It's understanding what causes conversion and Mm -hmm. clear, simple, not confusing language enables someone to continue to say yes to you as they read down your page. Um, Just like a lot of white space and arrows and, you know, um, single columns and all that stuff that you use, like that helps someone continue their journey down the page. So yeah, it's, it's about, it's about the goal and your goal does not have to be to prove yourself. Remember it is always about them. It's not about you. Yes. Oh, I love it. Uh, These were such great ones. Such great tips. We had other things I want to talk to Brittany about, but we're going to have to do another like round two episode because I should know there's so much you can share with these. Yeah. But these were like such great. Like again, you guys like foundational copywriting stuff to entertain and sell your customers. So, okay. To close us out first, how about this? Let me ask you the rapid fire questions first. And then I want you to tell everyone where we can like connect with you and find you all that good stuff. So these are just quick answers, whatever comes to mind. Uh, You already kind of answered this first one I I have, but, but you're a true crime fan. So like favorite, you said your favorite true crime show is my favorite murder. What about a book? Or no, that you said that's your favorite podcast. What about yeah. a show or a book or another podcast you'd recommend? Because I know other listeners like myself are also true crime fans. Yeah. So I definitely mainly consume podcasts. I'm actually currently reading um, another John Douglas book. So John Douglas is the guy who wrote Mindhunter and he's, you know, the he's the main character. Well, the person the main character is based off of in the show Mindhunter. He's kind of a... I don't love him, but his stuff is really interesting. So I read Mindhunter. Now I'm reading another one called The Killer Across the Table. Um, I just don't like John Douglas, but it's, it's a really fascinating book. And then my favorite podcasts are, um, yes, My Favorite Murder, Crime Junkie, and then Case File, which is really funny because it's totally different than My Favorite Murder, but it's my yeah. favorite. Okay, awesome. I need to check out Case File. Okay, the most impactful business book you've read? Okay. So I made a note to myself to go back and look through all the ones that I've read and pick out one. And I forgot to do that. But the first thing that comes to mind is a book written by um, Stephen King, who he's pretty problematic. So I'm just going to say, I love this book and we don't need to talk about him, but he wrote a book called on writing. And um, it just like, it's about his writing process and about writing in it. There's so many great, like, technical or academic copywriting books out there. And this is just like the Mecca of telling a good story. So I loved that book. Okay. I, I own that book and have never read it. I need to read it because I love Stephen King, but I had not read the one. Okay. That's awesome. Uh, okay. A favorite random business tool that you use a lot that you feel like we could benefit from. I love it. Um, probably the ones I use the most, uh, Grammarly. If you don't already have Grammarly installed in your computer. It is a free Chrome plugin. There is a paid version, but it just tells you anytime you're writing something that doesn't make sense or is really like wonky or misspelled or you missed a comma. Grammarly is life. And then after that, it's probably Trello, Google Doc, and HoneyBook. Those are the ones I use. Awesome. Love it. Okay. And then this last question is really funny. I think, I think you're the funny person to answer it. <laughs> Would you rather be able to speak every language in the world or be able to talk to animals? Oh my God. Animals a hundred percent of the time. Like I do not like people. Why would I want to talk to more of them? I want to hear what all the elephants are thinking about. I, I love that. Okay. I figured, I actually thought like, what will Brittany answer this as? And I thought that's what you would say. That's what's your, awesome what's your answer? Saying. I would like to be able to talk to squirrels, like legitimately yeah. like the ones. What are they thinking? Yeah. What are they thinking? Always, yep. That, that's so fun. <laughs> okay. 
So tell everyone, okay, where they can find you to follow you, get your tips to to hire you, like where's the best way to connect with you? Yeah, so definitely the best place where you're gonna get like the golden nuggets are my email list, is my email list. Good thing I don't do words for a living. Um, <laughs> and I think one of the easiest ways to get on there that might actually help you study some personality writing and some intentional market research is my quiz because I wrote that very specifically to gain information that I need for my business and to help my audience connect with me and to tell them about themselves and to show off my personality. So that might be a good place to like put, see all this put in motion. And that is just um, brittanymcbean.com forward slash quiz. And then um, if you're not into email, you can find me on Instagram. Yeah. Also, it's just your name, right? We'll link to it. It's Brittany too. L. McBean, but there are not okay. a ton of Brittany McBeans Perfect. out in the world. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Well, again, like have to have you back to talk about even more tips, but this has been awesome. Thank that'd you. Be so, yeah, that'd be great. I love this. Thanks so much. Thank you for listening to the podcast this week, friend. I appreciate you being here. And hey, if you enjoyed this episode, I want to tell you about something. I would encourage you to check out my website template shop over on elizabethmccravey.com. You'll find show it website templates and they are easy to use, strategically designed and created to help you book more clients and customers. Maybe your current website is really boring. I don't know. Maybe it is. And maybe you don't want to hurt its feelings, but you know, it's true. And your website needs to be strategically and intentionally designed in order for it to convert your viewers into raving customers. And that's what these website templates do on MShop. These are pre-made website templates built for the Show It platform where you can plug and play your content into the template with ease and then get started with a website that is made to actually make you money. Isn't that what we all want, right? So go shop the templates at elizabethmccravey.com slash shop. That link is also in the show notes. And don't forget that you can actually subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening so that you never miss an episode. And I would so appreciate appreciate it if you left a rating and review for the show on Apple Podcasts or even just share it with a friend. It's a great way to support the show and then give us your feedback. So thanks so much for listening.